in order to reset the dopamine system, essentially in order to break an addictive pattern, to become unaddicted. 30 days of zero interaction with that substance, that person, et cetera. Right. Is that correct? Yeah. And and 30 days is, in my clinical experience, the average amount of time it takes for the brain to reset reward pathways for dopamine transmission to regenerate itself. There's also a little bit of science that suggests that that's true. Some imaging studies showing that um, our brains are still in a dopamine deficit state two weeks um, after we've been using our drug. And then a, a study by Shuckett and Brown, which took a group of um, depressed men who also were addicted to alcohol, put them in a hospital where the, they had received no treatment for depression, but they had no, no access to alcohol in that time. And after four weeks, 80% of them no longer met criteria for major depression. So again, this idea that by depriving ourselves of this high dopamine, high reward substance or behavior, we allow our brains to regenerate its own dopamine to, for the balance to really equilibrate. And then we're in a, a place where we can sort of enjoy other things. So that progressive narrowing of what right. brings one pleasure eventually yeah. expands. So I'd like to um, dissect out that 30 days a little more mm -hmm. finely. Um, and I also want to address how does one stop doing something for 30 days if the thing is a thought? So mm. we'll kind of put that on the shelf for yeah. the moment. So days one through 10, I would imagine will be very uncomfortable. Yes. They're going to suck, right. basically, <laughs> to be quite honest. Because what if the way you describe this pleasure pain balance, yeah. to my mind, says that if you remove what little pleasure one is getting or a lot of pleasure from engaging in some behavior, that's gone. The pain system is really ramped up and nothing is making me feel good. I'll just use myself as an example. I'm not in recovery, but you know, that 10 days is going to be miserable. Right. Anxiety, mm -hmm. trouble sleeping, yep. um, physical agitation yes. to the point where, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, maybe impulsive, angry. Should, yes. should one expect all of that? Should the family members of people expect all of that? Yeah. So what I say to patients, and it's a really important piece of this intervention, is that you will feel worse before you feel better. Um, For how long? Yeah. This is probably so, the first question right, they yes. ask, right? And, and I say, usually in my clinical experience, you'll feel worse for two weeks. But if you can make it through those first two weeks, the sun will start to come out in week three. And by week four, most people are feeling a whole lot better than they were before they stopped using their sub substance. So um, yeah, you have to, it's, it's a hard thing. Like you have to sign up for it. And I will say, obviously there are people with addictions that are so severe that as long as they have access to their drug or behavior, they're not able to stop themselves. And that's why we have, you know, higher levels of care sure. or residential treatment. So this is not going to be for everybody, this intervention, but it's amazing how many people with really severe addictions to things like heroin, cocaine, you know, very severe pornography addictions, I posit this, and I do it as an experiment. I said, you know what, let, let's try this experiment. I'm always amazed, number one, how many of them are willing, and number two, how many of them are actually able to do it. They are able to do it. And, and so that little nudge is sort of just what they need. And the carrot is, you know, there's a better life out there for you. And you'll be able to taste it in a month. You really will be able to begin to see that you can feel better and that there's another way. So the way you describe it um, seems like it's hard, mm -hmm. but it's doable for yes. most people, not yeah. everybody. Right. And we'll return to the that category of people who can't do that on their own. Um, well, then days 21 through 30, uh, people are feeling better. The sun is starting to come out, as you mentioned, They, it, which translates in the narrative we've created here and supported by biology that dopamine is starting to be released in response to the taste of a really good cup of coffee for yes instance. exactly that, whereas before it was only to insert you know addictive behavior right that's <laughs> what right. whichever of it course coffee to. can be addictive too but but we'll leave sure. that aside <laughs> yeah i feel like coffee has a kind of um consumption limiting mechanism built in where at some point you just can't ingest anymore yeah um, but maybe that's wrong sorry to 
give lift to the <laughs> caffeine addicts out there as I cl- as I clutch my my, my mug. Um, so days twenty one through thirty, um, I've seen a lot of people go through addiction and addiction treatment. I've spent a lot of time in those places, actually um, looking at it, researching. I've got friends in that community. I, I'm close with that community. 